All right, in this video we're going to find new functions when we're combining functions. We're going to combine them through arithmetic operations. So here's an example, um, and this one comes from your text also in case you wanted to follow along, and it's number 18 from your text. So f of x equals the square root of 1 minus x, g of x equals x cubed. Before we start, we always want to identify the domain of the original functions because it plays a role um, in the problem, and then of course we'll find the domain after we've combined functions. Let's start with g of x. Uh, g of x is x cubed, it's a polynomial. The domain of all polynomials is all real numbers. Let's go back here to f of x and find the domain of f of x. Um, well, it can't have zero, um, I actually I can't have zero under the radical, but I can't have anything less than zero. So one would give me a zero, so that would be a legitimate thing to have. Okay, and so then my domain must be all numbers less than or equal to 1. Let's see, it can be 1 because 1 minus 1 is 0, square root of 0 is 0, but if it's less than 1, like as an example, 0, 0 is less than 1, 1 minus 0 is 1, square root of 1 is 1, so that's legitimate. It can't be greater than that because that would, uh, let's pick an example, 2. If x is 2, you have 1 minus 2 is negative 1, and uh, we can't make a function if we're not dealing with real numbers. So now that we've identified the domain, let's go ahead and do the first problem here. So, or the first example. So we want to combine and make a new function when we add them. Okay, so notice how this problem is different than the one I did previously because we're not evaluating it. We are creating a new function. So this really means f of x plus g of x. So I'm just going to take the f of x function. Here it is, the square root of 1 minus x, and I add x cubed to it. And that's my new function. And what's my domain? Well, nothing really has changed here. So this can be all real numbers, this part of it, but I still can't have x um, greater than 1, greater than 1. So my domain here is x has to be less than or equal to 1. And that's for the whole function. So you see how the domain of f of x um, plays a huge role in the domain of f plus g of x. Let's do another example. Let's do subtraction. So we have f minus g at x. Well, this means I break them apart, f of x minus g of x. So we have the square root of 1 minus x subtract x cubed. And we want to evaluate our domain here. We have the same situation as the adding. So we have x must be less than or equal to 1. All right, let's move on to multiplication. So in multiplication, we have f times g of x. So this means I have f of x multiplied by g of x. So I have square root of 1 minus x. I'm going to multiply that by x cubed. And then typically, we just write it in the front. So it looks like that, 1 minus x, okay? And let's talk about our domain of this one. So again, I can't have um, a negative in the radical there, so x has to be less than or equal to 1. And then let's do division. That's our last one here. So I have f divided by g of x. So this really means I'm going to take f of x, and I'm going to divide it by g of x. So my f of x is the square root of 1 minus x, and that's all over x cubed. So let's talk about our domain here. All right, so here we have the same radical we've had in each one of them. So we know that x has got to be less than or equal to 1. But now look here. We've introduced something new. We have a denominator. And you know that you cannot have 0 in the denominator. So that would mean you could set x cubed equal to 0 and solve to see what it can't be. And it can't be 0. So with our domain, in addition to x less than or equal to 1, we also have x can't be 0. And that's the domain of that one. That's the end of this video on combining functions.